Hi, I'm Al Williams. A group of us decided to build a small project we found on the web called a super probe and I thought I would try to demonstrate it. I built this on a breadboard and we also ported the code from a PIC 16 F870 to the newer, cheaper, and better 16F887 chip. So that took a little doing, but not too much. And the PIC itself is pretty much the entire project. There's a whole slew of resistors here that are wired up to different points to make different types of outputs. There's two switches. Uh, there's the LED display here, and that's actually driven so that there's only one segment on at any given time, which means it's probably going to look terrible on the video, but to your eye, it looks pretty good, and that prevents it from requiring any current limiting out of the PIC, because only one segment's on at one time. And there's a small power supply. This LED is just here for testing. So, right now... We're in PWM mode, and the PWM, you have to use your imagination a little bit for that. And we're at 20% duty cycle. So here on the digital scope, you can see, I don't know if you can read that or not, but uh, you can see you've got little small on pulses and pretty long off pulses. And the duty cycle, according to the calculator here, is exactly 20.3%. So as we go forward, You can see the display is updating as I push the button. And you can see that in fact our duty cycle is much higher now. According to this it's 59.8% and according to this it's 60%. So that's pretty close, pretty good. So that's one of the modes that this probe can do. Here's IR38 and what that does is that basically just outputs 38 kilohertz modulated signal like to drive an infrared LED for example. Okay, here's the pseudo random generator which generates just a random pulse train. This is the square wave generator and you can see it generates a square wave and it's got a certain frequency and you can change that frequency with the buttons okay, the next mode this is the RC servo mode again you kinda have to use your imagination and so that's generating a 1500 millisecond pulse or excuse me a 1.5 millisecond pulse with a very large gap in between it and that would be appropriate for driving a radio controlled servo remote control servo and in fact you can change the pulse width from 1500 but that's 1500 there and by using the buttons you can change that this is the MIDI output and so it generates a MIDI tone. I'm not 100% sure how that works or what it should look like to tell you the truth. This is the serial port set at 1200 baud and so it's sending out the letters A through Z in a carriage return as long as I press the button down and you can in fact change to different baud rates. So that's 4800 baud you can see much faster and I think it'll go up to 9600. Okay, NTSC's video output it's supposed to be a line of white dots I think when you push the button in. Hard to see here but you can see there's some activity there. Signal generator let's go to a faster side on the scope here I think I have to go to untriggered for that. And then we'll push a button. And you can see it's again generating some kind of pulse train. The coil I won't demonstrate. You can hook an inductor and it will charge and tell you the value of the inductance. Capacitance, same thing. 
with a capacitor. You can get a pulse counter. And right now it's looking at 256. I guess that's the last thing it counted. There you go. And you can see it counting pulses. I'll change the frequency. There we go. That's a much lower frequency and you can see the count went down quite a bit and back up. So you can assume that's really counting. Okay, frequency. So the frequency here is showing about 1041. I think that's hertz, I think. And there's a way that it scales the display if there's kilohertz or megahertz. And you can find all that on their website. So if I increase the frequency again, So if you look there, 16.68, I think that's kilohertz. And if I push this button, it shows me the least significant digits. So it's 166675. So just out of curiosity, if I go look at the scope attached to the input here, and I could do a spectrum analysis, but I think instead I will just turn the calculator back on. And in fact, it says the frequency, if you can see that, is 16.7 kilohertz. So, pretty good. Diode is a voltmeter, but it excites uh, through a resistor, puts 5 volts through there so that you can read the diode drop of a transistor junction or a diode junction. So let's go to the voltmeter instead. And I'm going to take the probe this time and put it on a pot that's connected from 0 to 5 volts. So about halfway up and all the way over to 5 volts. Not super accurate because it's using the power supply voltage as a reference. But let's see, let's set that to 2 volts. And if we come over here on the scope, this is a times 10 probe, by the way, so let's see, that's ground, and so it's just a little over one division above, and we're on 1.5 volts per division which is actually says 0.15 but we're times 10 probe. The pulsar here actually shows if you have a high or a low, in this case we have a high and when you push the button it pulses it low with a different duty cycle. It's basically a logic pulsar. And the logic probe circuit shows you if the probe tip is high low or floating. Right now it thinks it's floating. Now it thinks it's low. Now it thinks it's high. You might have noticed when it pulses briefly it shows a P. It gives you an idea that there was a pulse on the line. So just basically a logic probe. And now we're back to PWM. Back at 59 percent PWM. So it actually remembers the parameters. And so that's basically the smart probe we have some plans for different things to do with it uh, now that we have a bigger processor that's more capable we've got a little extra I.O. and we also have nice cases for them which obviously this is not it but uh, we will eventually have the PC board being done by Steve Hester and we'll, they'll fit in the little probe cases and it'll be a handy little instrument. Thanks for watching.